and welcome to another episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Carmen and this is my crafty podcast where I talk about all of the things I knit, crochet, design and other things. Um, I've actually been thinking uh, because I never really know what to say in my intro. Um, I've been watching a lot of other podcasts and they all have their intro so well put together and I've just been thinking like, why can't I do that? Um, and it occurred to me that I'm not really about a specific type of craft. Um, when people ask me, are you a knitter or a crocheter, I never really know what to say because I like them both equally. Um, well, I think they have their different, <clears throat> uh, their different places. Um, in the summer I like to crochet more, in the winter I like to knit more. Maybe it's because in the winter I like, or maybe for winter time I like making garments and I do like the knit fabric a lot more for garments and in summer I like to work with cotton because it's um it's cool on your hands and um it doesn't mind if your hands are wet from kind of coming out of the pool or um or sweaty because of the hot weather um and I like crochet a lot for uh home deco items or um, cuddly toys because uh, I think it's so fiddly to, to knit uh, toys like all kinds of different uh, small parts um, so I can't really say it like if you would ask me you can choose either one that you would do for the rest of your life I would not be able to make a decision because I like them both um, but even then, crochet knitting is not all what I do. I like spinning, I like embroidery, I like cross stitch, I like watercoloring as of uh, recently. Um, felting, I just, you know, I like a lot of things. So <laughs> I've just been thinking, what is my podcast about? Is it just me showing you random stuff? No, it isn't. So I might not always have the most popular um, content. I'm not. I'm not going to Rhinebeck, so I won't be having any Rhinebeck sweaters. I'll just be making sweaters for winter, <laughs> and um, I don't have those fancy uh, driftwood Scandinavian needles that everyone is um, guessing the pronunciation of. <laughs> I don't have those. I'm happy with my needles. Um, but I do hope I can create some content that is of added value to you and that is also fun for me to make because uh, I am having a lot of fun making these podcasts. Yeah, so I was thinking, I feel like I've said that sentence like 10 times. So what I'm actually documenting here is maybe my journey to becoming a full-time designer because that is my objective that is what I want to achieve in life and you know everybody knows that uh, I have I have a wonderful day job with with the best colleagues I could ever ask for um, but it's just you know it's just such a dream for me 
to become a full-time designer because this is what I love to do most and um, I'm just very glad that you are on this journey with me. <laughs> I, I love to share what I'm doing, um, what my conundrums are um, in the designing process and um, I just really like to uh, give a little sneak peek into my life for you guys um, because I love to share but also because I I love to um, like maybe maybe you're looking into designing and maybe I can give you some tips on that um, I would love that so um, so yeah maybe my podcast is just my journey into designing yeah that could be a really fun intro don't you think anyway enough enough blather um, <laughs> uh, let me tell you where you can find me um, on social media. On Instagram, I am a crafty underscore queens. I have a blog by the same name, craftyqueens.nl. On Ravelry, I am Caramelletje. Uh, and you can also find the group uh, in the groups tab at the Leaf, New Leaf Podcast. Um, and on Etsy, I am New Leaf Designs NL. So last week, I didn't have a very much to show you uh, because I um, could not show most of the things I was working on. I'm working on one commission and one um, new design, which I wasn't really sure of yet. Uh, I wasn't really sure if I was um, on the right route. Um, and I won't be blogging about it until um, in about one or two weeks because uh, whenever I blog about um, a pattern, I usually have the pattern ready. And then I start blogging about the yarn I'm using and then about the work in progress, although in fact it is already finished. But that is just so that um, so there's an, an continuous um, story. And I don't have to cut it short because I lost interest into the design or because the design didn't work. So just to, uh, in case people get really excited and then I cannot finish the pattern, I just um, only start posting about the pattern when I'm pretty sure um, that I can actually provide the pattern. So. Um, so I, I've decided that, um, that it is safe to show you now because I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. And um, <clears throat> I wasn't really sure before because it is something that I have never really seen anyone do before. Uh, and it's not, it's not completely innovative or whatever, but um, uh, let me just show you what it is. <laughs> So, um, I already shared a sneak peek on my uh, Instagram stories uh, where you would have seen a big blob of fluff. <laughs> um, and also this yarn. And I said on my Instagram stories how super soft it is and it really is. Uh, it's called Scapius Sweetheart Soft. And I'm working from the center and it's kind of floppy right now because it's almost, I think I've used 50% of it. Um, it's 100% polyester. It's 100 grams per ball, uh, 150 meters. Uh, and the texture is just amazing. And uh, it really reminded me of a bathrobe. Or, or those squishy bath mats or or fluffy towels and um, first I was thinking to make maybe a snuggly toy with it because it is super soft um, and some people have also said oh this would be great for a baby blanket but it wouldn't be because it's 100% plastic right so uh, so it's kind of you know it's it will melt if there is fire near it, and you don't you don't want to put any uh, risk like that on your child. Um, and with snuggly toys, 
I don't know, it would just be small and fiddly and that would be fine. But uh, with this yarn, you cannot really see your stitches. So if you have to increase or decrease, you would just have to use a lot of stitch markers. So what I did, <laughs> I'm not saying that what I did was easy, uh, but um, I am making a bathrobe. <laughs> I feel like... I feel like I'm the the weird, like the weird one in the podcasting world. Like, who on earth decides to make a bathrobe, right? Well, I do, <laughs> and this is how far I've gotten. Um, I'm doing an ombre, uh, ombre effect. So I have the white uh, sweetheart soft here, and then the light yellow here, and then after a after a, a bit more, I will continue on uh, with some uh, brighter yellow. I will show you in a bit. And there's a lot of fluff on here. Seriously. This yarn is like magnetic to... <laughs> to... Uh, dust. Yeah. But... Anyway, I've been making a bathrobe. I started at the, at the top. And I had to do quite a bit of frogging on this one because uh, I could not get the neckline to look right. So I've done I've done a top I've done two top down knit cardigans. One was the uh, super bulky grandpa cardigan by Hohi Locatelli, um, which has a super easy construction, and I really loved it. And one is the uh, Antonio Antonia uh, cardigan by Coco Knits or by uh, Julie Weissenberger, who's the mastermind behind it. Um, and I thought, oh, well, I can uh, try this uh, for myself. Um, I have had a course on garment design before about how to do your measurements and how to calculate how many times you have to increase for a certain section. So that was really helpful. Um, but for the beginning, I kind of just came up with a number of stitches, which is so bad. Well, I, I made a swatch and then I kind of thought, oh, yeah. So I had the swatch and I was like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll use this for the uh, neck uh, or maybe a little bit less so that if I block it and it will stretch it, it won't have a gaping neck hole. Um, but still, I might, well, I, I'm pretty sure that I will still add a collar to it. So what I did, uh, this will be a free pattern on my blog. Um, so I'm not sure if, if you can see this because it's white on white. Uh, I start here and then I just increase. I, it sounds very easy, but it wasn't. Uh, but no worries, I've done all the math for you. So you increase until you have enough um, enough length for your um, arms or for your sleeves, and uh, enough stitches for your uh, for the circumference of your arms. And then you put this on a separate uh, needle or a separate a separate cable, and then uh, continue with the body. And. I've used one and a half ball, I think. No, two balls of the white color. So that's 200 grams already. And I have, I also have 200 grams of the yellow. Um, and I will use, I still have to do some calculating on uh, what percentage to use for the body and then for the sleeves because I have saved one entire ball of white for um, for the sleeves and also for the collar because the collar will be, it will just be the color that it's in the body, if that makes sense. So uh, for this part, the color will be white. For this part, the color will be light yellow. So I will make a button band. I will pick up the stitches around, and then when I come to the color change, I will just 
change color and kind of twist the yarn in, in the back so that the so that it will be um, one piece. Um, I'm not sure how that will work, but we'll see. I'm really, I'm really liking it so far. It is so squishy and so snuggly. And, um, and now it is, it's really a breeze because I don't need to increase or decrease anymore. Um, on this part, of course, I had to. And I put in stitch markers uh, and I would just say like uh, knit into one stitch before the stitch mark and then knit from the back. And then uh, so the stitch markers really help with determining where to put your increases because you cannot see. Uh, an advantage of not being able to see the stitches is that you don't have to worry about st stuck in that like you don't have to worry about knit or purl. So I just knit the whole thing. It's garter stitch, which you can kind of see because you can see the ridges. Can you see that? Yeah, so you can kind of see it's garter stitch, but um, it just looks extra fluffy to me. And it will be much easier to pick up the stitches on the sides because uh, I just imagine to go through every ridge and then at the stitches, I am not sure if that will, if then I will have enough stitches, like, because it's that's one per two rows, right? That might not be enough, but we'll see. Garter stitches anyway. So for stockinette, if you're picking up for the bottom for the button band, uh, you pick up three out of four stitches, so you pick up seventy five percent. But garter stitch is a lot more dense, so I th I'm thinking one out of two, because every every bump, that's every other row, so that's like 50%. But I think because it's denser, it will work out. It, yeah, it will work out. Um, so otherwise, uh, let me put it this way: if for stockinette, um, the stitches are a bit longer. Um, so the trick is that you pick up 75% of the stitches. If you were to pick up 50% of the stitches, it would pucker up a little bit. Uh, so it would, um, it, yeah, I'm not sure how to say it, but um, yeah, it would pucker up. And I feel like because the garter stitch is denser that it would not have that effect. So we'll see. <laughs> That's what I still have to do. And also because uh, it's almost, I'm sorry for the clanking, it's almost impossible to count your rows. So I had attached this, this little row counter. Um, I stopped ca uh, counting the rows after the sleeve divide because there is no more increasing or decreasing at that point. So it doesn't matter. I'll just, um, I'll just put it in the pattern, like make sure you have about this much grams of your yarn left. I think that would be easiest uh, to figure that out. Uh, or maybe, you know, knit for this many centimeters. But this one really saved my life uh, for the increased rows. Um, so I just, I put a little row counter on um, I just made a stitch marker out of it because usually the row counter goes um, on the end of straight needles. So you put the row counter on your needle first uh, until it, and it slides to the little bump at the end and then you uh, cast on. Uh, but for other needles it just doesn't work. Uh, and I'm working on circular needles now, so there's no way I can put the row counter on that somewhere. Um, and yeah, so I just uh, made a stitch marker out of it, and it works perfectly. Yes, so I'm really happy with how this is going. Um, it's gonna be called my Wake Up Sunshine bathrobe. Um, sunshine also because of uh, the yellow gradient. Let me let me go grab that other yellow uh, yarn to show you.
These are the colors that I picked. This is gonna be on top, so it's gonna, <laughs> so it's gonna kind of fade like this. Well, not fade, I'm not doing a fade. I'm just doing a kind of color block. Uh, so this is gonna be the color at the bottom. I love this yellow, I love it. Um, so pretty. And it will go really well with it. I'm so looking forward to this. Um, yeah. Yeah, so... So that was my one of my secret project projects uh, from last week. And... Um, yeah, what, I, what else did I want to talk about? Uh, or what else did I want to tell you about this project? I'm using a three and a half millimeter needle, which is kind of small, um, but it is the recommended needle size, a three to three and a half millimeter, um, and it is it is producing a really great dense fabric, uh, and I think um, oh right, that's what I wanted to tell you, because a lot of people are intimidated by fuzzy yarn, um, and it is easier to knit with it than to crochet with it. Let me tell you that. Because on your uh, when you're knitting, you can see the stitches on your needle when you spread them out. Having said that, it's not super easy. Um, one strand is made up uh, of two strands, so it's two ply, and sometimes uh, you're able to split the yarn. So you'll have to watch out for that. Um, and also, uh, I'm using three and a half millimeter needles, so, um, so they're kind of more bunched together. If you'd like to see the stitches better, you could use a four millimeter needle. Uh, that way it would be easier to see the stitches and uh, it would create a more loose fabric, but that would probably be fine. It's quite dense right now. I just, I like bathrobes to be super dense. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that was everything, but if anything else pops up, I'll just talk about that next time, because I'll surely be working on that um, next week. But for now, it is flying, and I'm loving knitting on this. I'm also still working on my Galactica socks. I was actually in the middle of uh, darning, uh, or darning, weaving in this end. And then I just thought, oh, let's record a podcast. Um, yeah, so I'll finish, I'll finish that later. Um, and the second one... Um, I just have to do a little bit more of the main color and then I can uh, do the contrast rib, which is nice. And yeah, I'm really enjoying this knit, although it's not going as fast, but uh, I'm mainly uh, knitting on this in the car. And yeah, I did, I did this much yesterday and then the heel this yeah this much and two days before that i'm using the heel from uh the sock magician sock magician's toe up recipe um yeah it's a toe up gusset heel and i'm really liking it uh and i just while while doing the heel flap on the second one i noticed that i hadn't done the slip one knit one so you get a kind of more dense fabric for the heel flap. I hadn't done that on the first one so I was like, oh, well, I'll just repeat my mistake so at least they'll be the same. <laughs> yeah, but I have a lot more pairs of socks to knit this this year uh, before Christmas so I'll, uh, I'll be able to um, to practice it a few more times because it does it does take some math and um, 
yeah, but overall it's a really nice heel pattern, but I do I do have to look at the pattern to see, uh, you know, to figure out the stitch count. Uh, the yarn I'm using is Fildar. It's called Phil Folk 100. Uh, the 100 just stands for uh, 100 grams. You also have Phil Folk uh, 50. And this uh, colorway is called Galactique, which is why I'm calling them my Galactica socks. And the bright purple I'm using for the uh, for the cuff is a mini I got from Ushidita Fiber Art, um, who lives very close to me. <laughs> so another thing I want to talk about um, is that I enrolled in the Knit Stars 2.0 workshop uh, or master classes. And if you haven't heard of it, uh, just go Google it, Knit Stars. Um, this is their second um, second set of master classes, and with every um, master class, you get uh, a workshop from ten amazing designers, and they've had the series one point oh last year, and uh, they had uh, I'm not sure well at least Stephen West uh, last year. Uh, I'm not really sure <laughs> Romy Hill I saw but I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure who that is I'm sorry um, but more importantly this year uh, this year they have master classes from Andrea Maori uh, Laura Nelkin Tin Can Knits um, Amy Herzog uh, who's from a Knit to Flatter on Craftsy um, who else Stephen B um, <laughs> oh, and also uh, Tamara Kelly from the Moogly blog. Uh, so most of them are knit designers. There are 10 in total. And then Tamara is a crochet celeb from the Moogly blog. And then one of the others uh, is the owner of a farm, which is really interesting. And she will talk about her farm life and uh, also about uh, managing the sheep, of course, and uh, natural dyeing. So that's why I am really interested in it, because I love natural dyeing. Um, and I'm... Oh, right! And also, um, Michelle Wong. I'm just oh, so excited. Um, and I'm not sure how long each class will be, uh, but at least one hour, I thought. Uh, I'm, I'm just so excited to learn from Tin Can Knits, because her patterns, well, I'm, I'm quite ashamed to say that I've never knit a Tin Can Knits pattern, but uh, everyone says that their patterns are amazing, uh, that, the, that the explanation is just crystal clear, and they're the best patterns around, so I'm really excited to learn from her and um, also Andre Maori who is doing a master class on how to fade colors. I've never knit a, um, a pattern by her so I'm also really interested in that. Um, so the um, subscriptions or how do you say this? Enrollment time has ended for now uh, but after um, so they will they will upload the the master classes one by one I think one each day and then from October thirtieth I think I think so somewhere in October and then uh, during that time they will have two uh, live uh, Q and A's with the designers I'm really looking forward to that and we'll have some uh, exclusive yarn that uh, oh right uh, I I keep on thinking of names. Uh, uh, Beta or Beata uh, from Hedgehog Fibers is also giving a master class and she has dyed a custom colorway for, for Knit Stars. Um, and, and then after all of that is done, enrollment will open again and people can just watch the videos but they will not have any access to the yarn and they won't have any um, Q and A uh, action, and I'm assuming the price will maybe also go up. 
um, it was quite pricey, I must say. Uh, last year it was, or the class from last year uh, is uh, still available now for $200. And uh, to enroll now in the second uh, version, uh, it was $230, um, which is quite an investment. But, um, you know, there's 10, 10 amazing people. <laughs> <laughs> right now I I remember Nancy Marchand is also giving a class which is amazing so 10 amazing instructors uh, you will learn from them an amazing class they also have some bonus patterns thrown in uh, most of them uh, so that would be $23 per person and or per class and if Andrea Maori was giving a workshop in my living room where I watched from my laptop, I would surely pay $23 for that. Um, especially if I can keep on rewinding it <laughs> and even ask her questions in the live uh, Q&A. So putting it like that, uh, I mean, there might be some people who I would not have known or I would not have chosen to get masterclasses from, but but then again, to get a masterclass from Nancy Marchand on uh, on brioche, that would cost a lot more than twenty three dollars, and uh, I would have to get transportation to it. So, um, yeah. So it, all in all, it's pretty good price, especially since you know I really want to be a full time designer, and I think I can learn a lot from this. So. I just look at it as an investment in my career <laughs> um, yeah so I'm really excited about that uh, my friend Tammy from Canada she is also uh, participating she's also one of the escapist bloggers uh, so we chat quite a bit um, she totally enabled me uh, it was like oh my god I totally enrolled in the Nistars 2.0 I was like what is this and uh, Enrollments would close in like 10 hours So I, I look at the website and I'm like instantly sold <laughs> I'm so bad um, Like advertisements like that really work on me. They I'm enabled easily um, Yeah, so that's one thing I'm really looking forward to that's in about a month and then later this week, the Mystery Knit Along from Stephen West will start. So the Speckle Pop Mystery Knit Along. And I still have to uh, wind up my yarn. It's just so pretty in the skein. I don't really want to wind it up. Yeah, but I'll be doing that um, probably later this week. Because I'm not really good at winding skeins into balls of yarn. Yeah, not really. I haven't had any time to pick uh, any winners yet for uh, for my after party design booklets, uh, which are pattern booklets, including one pattern for my uh, scarf, uh, which is a knit cabled scarf. Um, there's a thread in the Ravelry group, uh, so if you want to enter that to win the cabled scarf, uh, all you have to do is let me know uh, your experience with cables, um, do you like cables? Uh, um, which ones would you like to, to knit? Like um, this is kind of diamond cable with a seed stitch in the middle. There's also a mock cable. Um, you know, you have many kinds of cables, horseshoe cables, uh, braids. Um, yeah, I just let me know um, what your view is on cables and what kind of projects you, you like to use them for. So I'll just wait uh, one more week because I, you know, <laughs> I just haven't had any time to pick any winners. So uh, that will giveaway will be open for one more week. Uh, speaking about winners, the winner from last week hasn't got in touch with me yet. So please, if you haven't uh, watched the previous episode yet, please do. Because you may be the winner of some Amsterdam goodies, including a fun project bag and a mini. Um... Uh, what else? I have restocked the Betsy boxes in my Etsy shop. Uh, 
I did some work on that during this week. I was out of the plastic bags, which I used to put the filling in. Um, well, I wasn't out of them. I just, I just couldn't find them anymore. So uh, I ordered more and uh, I will use them anyway. So no biggie. And um, yeah, um, so I restocked those and yeah. I will, um, I have some more work to do on my website, which is getting a revamp very shortly. So I'm really excited about that, but I uh, do have to do some more work on it. Uh, next week, uh, next weekend, I'll be visiting a friend of mine who's an expert on these things. Uh, so he'll be able to help me out, but um, I still have to do, uh, uh, like I still have to, find a template I like and uh, think about what what I want um, what do I want for the home page uh, you know what kind of layout so there's a lot of thought that goes into that um, yeah but I won't bore you with that I'll just announce when the new website is ready so you can all see it um, as I've said before I will be rebranding from Crafty Queens to New Leaf Designs simply because I feel like I've kind of outgrown the name Crafty Queens um, I, I love it but um, I feel like it's time for something more modern and mature um, although I do love the name Crafty Queens because um, there are a lot of crafty women in my family uh, so many creativity, um, or so much creativity. God, I'm, I'm sounding like the doog, uh, with all the grammar mistakes. Um, so they are my crafty queens. Um, yeah, so my blog was kind of a tribute to them. But I feel like a lot of blogs are called crafty something or, um, yeah, and they're not very, very easy to... Uh, to remember like oh, it's crafty something. Yeah, but um, Yeah, <laughs> so a lot of blogs are called crafty something um, So I just wanted uh, a new identity and also I've been really into natural dyeing and nature in general So and I really want to start afresh. So new leaf turning a new leaf mm -hmm. Yeah <laughs> Yeah it just sounds more mature, which, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, ready for a new phase in my life. And I feel like new leaf designs reflects that. Anyway, lots of babbling. Um, that was all I had to talk about this week with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, be sure to stick around for next week's episode. See you. Bye-bye.